What is up guys it's mason once again and we are on day three round eight like i said i didn't play in the first round i had to be elsewhere so i have a bye so currently i have four points and i need two wins to qualify for the nationals let's see if i'm able to do it so here i'm playing edward susu uh strong player i've only played him once and i lost heavily uh so this is another chance like this this tournament was a chance for me to play people of like who were very strong and had beaten him like in the past and maybe i could try and get them back um so i get to play the white pieces i think that's good that's a good way to start uh a day uh because of the loss from the previous day but uh yeah i have the white pieces and we go with d4 sorry d4 and he plays e6 e4 like i said french defense d5 and i trade <laughs> now like again these kind of moves lead you into very drawish positions and you'd have to go to an end game but i recall i watched a video from john bartholomew where he had a similar pawn structure and he gave me some very decent ideas i could like play around with so i was eager to try and figure it out yeah the video is an exchange french which is kind of drawish and a boring position i was looking forward to i was really looking forward to it because it, i would still get a certain kind of jobaba landing setup and maybe I could play some plans from it. Bishop to f4. Knight to f6, knight to f3, bishop to e7, bishop to d3. Like I said, to Baba landing kind of setup. And now he plays bishop to g4. And I'm completely fine with this. h3 to see what he's going to do with that knight. He moves back and I play c3. Now, there's no need to play c3. I just played c3 for planes because I like c3. But knight to c3, I think, is a much better option. I think playing knight to c3 is a much better option. Um for many reasons let's say for example like knight here you want to get this guy out mm -hmm. no you want to move the bishop bishop i think back first because if you play this you lose the knight here but i just want to create a scenario which I, I showed in the previous game let's see my opponent castles here here let's see here and now we have takes takes and then this 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 is exactly the same kind of like structure i'm talking about. so well again i'm playing bad moves because i'm trying to like uh explain what i'm looking for in the position so if the engine doesn't like it understand i'm intentionally making bad moves because you can see that i'm losing my queen here that's what's showing but i don't show you that kind of like ideas i was going for okay so my opponent um plays after i play c3 my opponent plays castles i castle myself and then he plays knight b to d7 <clears throat> possibly even for c5 maybe even c3 with the queen coming in here moves upon, upon moves I play knight b to d2. I want to move my queen out of there, but the knight is disturbing me. The bishop spin is disturbing me. Uh, he plays c5. I play rook to e1. Again, if I can get to the square, the nice square for me to be in. He also plays rook to e1, rook to e8. I play queen to c2. Uh, I was considering if I would have a Greek gift, but it didn't look like possible, even with this knight didn't take. So now my opponent plays b6. And I'm like, okay. So the position is fine if anything at all he has like pressure on this pawn maybe i might we might get a symmetrical iqp and uh, so my, my plans are basic here maybe i'll take i don't really know yet but my knight getting to e5 i really want to do that um if possible maybe double up on the file because it seems like if i could control this file i would have a very good shot at this game and th that's basically where my mind is going again i don't really think there are so many ideas you can push in this uh because of how the the the, 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 the position is but i'm just trying to figure out like basic plans i can go for to kind of pressure my opponent one way or the other so now i go knight to e5 which i said was my plan uh and now he plays rook to c8 and rook to c8 is a very obvious move uh if i don't do anything he has pawn takes and if pawn takes then my queen is <clears throat> as we can see in a lot of danger so I look here for a bit and I I ask myself that this this move uh is questionable. This rook move is questionable because I could actually attack the rook and if the rook comes in here I take right and I'm targeting your your rook. 
I, I could play a funnier move, right? Right. I, I could play a funny move. I don't know if this works, but I think I could play a funny move like this, right? I don't think this works, but I could make a funny move like this. So I, I'm, I'm like, okay, so you don't really have the time to, and I could also play like Bishop here. So I'm like, you don't really have the time or the luxury to stress my queen out by playing your bishop rook here to c8. So I just immediately, like I just showed you, I went immediately for bishop to a6. And the second reason why that was good is if my opponent comes in here, this, this is just, this is just game over, right? So that's, these are basically the lines I'm looking at. And I'm like, okay, attack the rook. He takes, I take his rook. He takes the knight. Um, I take his knight. Queen takes and then bishop takes. So, funny, fun, funny, funny, funny thing here. The engine just gives me a plus one. But here I thought I was completely winning. I kid you not. I thought I had won this game and I was fine. Like, that's what I thought. And I was thinking, oh, this game is going to be simple. There's not going to be any trouble. We're just going to check, check, check. Take, sorry, I didn't even take all the pieces at the end of the game. I, I completely overestimated um, my advantage in this position. You know, I think apparently the engine gave a much in, much more interesting line because after takes here, I think he considered he considered some some strange moves. But anyways, I don't remember them. Like I said, these these are my raw analysis. I, I don't remember so much. And you're not also allowed to write notes on your annotations. I would have done that. But anyways. So um, I <clears throat> I play bishop takes and then he goes in bishop to g6. I simply move my queen here because I'm attacking this pawn. And uh, I like my position. One of the plans again is this bishop looks very trapped. Like it looks stuck. So I'm looking at like, again, these are very nice plans I want to get. My opponent brings his queen up. And I felt this move was wrong. I, I, I felt placing his queen here was wrong. Uh, I more or less expected him to. Sorry, what? Uh, or it might not be in this position, but I remember that he placed his queen somewhere, and I was like, "This is wrong." I might see it later on. So, like I said, I thought I was winning, so I guess I said that you know I'm going to trade off everything. So takes here, um, pawn takes, rook to a three. He pushes his pawn. I take, he takes with his queen. My knight is under attack. I can actually ignore it and go something like this and I think take here. But I play knight to f3, attacking the queen. Queen moves back. Yes. Yes, this is where I felt he made the mistake. So after I attacked his queen here, I expected the queen to come in here. And you see the, the reason why. So he plays queen all the way back to e8. And of course, I double. And... His file is now very, very weak. Like the file here is very weak. And I'm, I'm doing some calculations and I'm like, he's going to have to play this move. And this move kind of like tries to hold the position for him. But it may not hold uh, well enough, in my opinion. Uh, maybe there are ways I can like try and bring in more attackers. I have queen to b5. Uh... Trying to sneak in one way or the other. Like, that, that's what I felt. I felt like I have kind of locked these pieces down. My opponent can't really, he doesn't really have the luxury of moving. Going to b5, so that if he tries something like with the bishop, I, I have a lot of pressure. Right? So, that is what um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that he's tied down here, and, and uh, I have a simple plan of winning here. Um, but that's not what he played. I, I calculated the king forward, but that's not what he played. He rather played. Bishop to f5. And if you can remember what my idea in this game has always been, it's going to be very easy to predict what my next move is. And when I play this move, I left the board and after some minutes, uh, Mr. Susu started laughing. <laughs> he laughed out loud. It's like he saw, it's not like it's like he did see everything I was calculating. And that was my point. My point was, okay, even if there's going to be an end game, I'm going to be fine. His pawns here are doubled, isolated. This is also an isolated pawn. He has a very bad structure. And I have two rooks. 
So I felt like no matter what this endgame is, right? No matter how bad my endgames are. So I went for the move that goes for a quick endgame. Queen to a3. Queen to a3. Yeah, the engine doesn't like it, but I like it. And it's a very simple calculation you have to make here. If you do nothing, right? If you play king here, I take your pawn. Right? I take your pawn. If you take my queen, I go takes. And if you block, I take your queen still, right? So you take with your queen. I take with check. You block with your bishop. And the reason why I wanted his queen here is so that this is possible. He, he, he kind of, in a way, defends the position and he doesn't give me access to this square. Right? He doesn't, like, for example, he doesn't really have to trade queens here. If his queen was here, this check wouldn't force him to trade queens. He just move the king up and I possibly wouldn't have the ability to come to this square. Right? But this is the position we got. This is the position I envisioned. Uh, the bishop can't move. So there's nothing that can stop me from winning these pawns. It doesn't matter how he pushes the pawns. Nothing stops me from winning. This is king up. I win the pawn. He brings his bishop to c5. And I realized that my knight here was sort of like a lifesaver at some point. I simply play the move a3. Of course, I want to play b4. Push this bishop back. Everything will be fine. So I kind of expected um, kind of like a move here. I respected something here, I can't remember what it was. Um, my opponent plays bishop to e6, and I simply played b4, and now he's going to lose another pawn because um um because um if bishop here I come in this way and you can't come you can't come and defend the pawn in that way. So he brings his bishop here, and the point of the bishop coming in here is to attack my pawn base. I win the next pawn. Uh he plays bishop to c1 attacking my pawn i play a4 and the interesting thing is he would love to play this but my knight covers that square isn't that interesting so here and and why 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 do i think that that's a, a good idea let's just assume he plays this i come in here and he comes in here with the way i'm playing the game i would have to play this and after this you you can see that like i have some some problems in my position right <clears throat> Again, the reason why the, the engine doesn't agree is because of the move I have. So, the knight did a very good job being where it was. I began to push the pawns. Push him, push him, push him. Uh, I brought my knight in. Because I realized the king can't come in forward. Please, pawn push. But that's what I'm looking for. I play knight to c6. Blocking. Because you play bishop takes, I take. And you can never stop this. Oh, thing. So that was a very nice game. My opponent resigned after night here. I played those moves, but my opponent resigned after night. And for the first time, I defeated um, Edward Tosu. Another game that went... You know, I like how when I lose a game, the next day, the game goes... Now I have five points. It's just like one more game. If I manage to win that, I have like a 50-50% 40, 40, chance of qualifying. Again, because of the buy, the two losses, and the, and the loss to Kojo Bonsu, that is where my problem came from, right? That's where my problem came from. So, yeah, so far, so good. This tournament has been a blast. Uh, it hasn't ended, but it has been a blast. I really did enjoy this tournament from start to finish. And in the final video, find out whether I qualified or not when I play against my fellow teammate, from University of Ghana, Akins, a tactical player who I hate to play. Of course, he always plays tactics and I don't like, but um, yeah, it's going to be a great one. So guys, if you did enjoy this video, as always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, uh, you can join my streams live to interact with me and play some games with me on twitch.tv forward slash pen underscore Mason. Have a great one and I'll see you guys later.